it's Friday the 17th of November 2017. Welcome along to United Kingdom Talk to Television Centre here in Bracknell, Royal Berkshire, the jewel, the jewel of the Bracknell countryside. That's where I'm speaking to you from. Does mauve and blue go together all right? I don't know if it does. I was looking at myself for a, for a moment now on the... Uh, on the camera in front of me. Someone was asking me, just a little technical thing, someone was asking me, all the little pictures at the um, beginning there, do I do that while I'm sitting here? If you see what I mean. Do you, do you put all the pictures and everything together while I'm sitting here? Uh, answer to that one is no. Once I've started it, so the Union Jack is on one button, and the moment the countdown starts, that's all kind of um, one piece of film, one... One file on the computer. That's one file on the computer. Once it starts, it just carries on right to the point that you see me appear. I see me appear in a puff of smoke at the end of it with the date underneath. Then I've I've done something. So that whole five, it's about five and a half minutes altogether, isn't it? That whole five and a half to get uh, minutes together is kind of one little bit of film or one file, however you want to say. It's a file on a computer, yeah? But um, so you understand what it is, it's it's a, a computer thing. Now, there are rats! Rats, boys and girls, rats! Look at this, I love this story. I love this story. It's in this morning's Daily Mail. Now, this is the sort of thing that would have me howling. I find a lot of frightening things... And terrible things that happen to people funny. And do you think that's a sick mind? That is that what? <laughs> you know, sometimes you're on a plane and that you know you're flying along and a little bit of turbulence, and I think, ah, oh, here we go, and then woof, 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 like that, and people are screaming at the back, ah, ah, we're gonna die. I'm sitting there laughing. Oh, here's another story I find funny. In this morning's Daily Mirror, uh, they've got a video there showing the moment terrified commuters stood on their seats in a panic as a crazed rat tore around a busy subway train before jumping into a woman's bag. <laughs> God is punishing me. <coughs> oh, dear. Excuse me. <coughs> Where did that come from? Hilarious video shows the rats scurry up and down the carriage as people scream and look on in horror. For God's sake, people, it's only a blooming rat. What do you think it's going to do to you? You've probably eaten rats when you've bought kebabs down that dodgy ba kebab shop down the road. The critter quite common, uh, caused quite the commotion when it darted underneath the seat of two men who immediately had their legs in the air. In the minute-long clip, one man can be heard exclaiming that the rat tried to jump on somebody. <laughs> the confused creature continued to dart from one side of the New York subway car to the other, starting more startling, startling more and more trapped commuters. The passengers were believed to have been on a train in Brooklyn this week. Oh, it's not even in London. It's not even in London. How unexciting. I thought they were going to say it was on the Northern or the Bakerloo line. That looks like a place there are rats, doesn't it? The Northern line. Yes, I went on the Northern line this week when I went to the BBC Radio London Soul Night Out with Tony Blackburn. I'll tell you about that later. I didn't tell you about that last night, did I? We didn't have time. Calls were pouring in last night to the show. Pouring in. Um, <coughs> many commuters quickly got off when the train way, when the train stopped at Rockaway Avenue Station. I mean, how pathetic are people? It's a rat, for Christ's sake. They don't even attack people. Yes, they do. No, they don't. The thing was probably afraid. That's why it's jumped in the woman's handbag. <coughs> if it had been me, I would have taken home, chopped it up and eaten it. <laughs> Not really, I'm vegetarian. We don't eat dead we don't eat dead animals. Not on this programme, thank you very much. Footage then shows the large rat jump inside a bag a woman had abandoned on her seat as she ran away from the rampaging rat. Who writes this crap? The animal quickly jumped out as other passengers screamed in horror and clutched clutched their possessions. Well, if, if you ever needed an excuse to grab someone, that would be it. When you could grab someone then. You could touch them. You could touch them. I did touching on Wednesday night. Yes, I touched stars on Wednesday night. It's 
It's all coming up in the show. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. It finally scrambled for a place to hide underneath a seat after one man attempted to stamp on the rodent. Oh, what a horrible man. Well, I hope when he dies, God stamps on his head. I really do. Stamped on the rodent as it clawed at the subway's car doors in an attempt to get away. I mean, they make it sound like a great big wild animal, don't they? It's only a rat for Lord's sake. God, so I, I've seen rats running around in London. I have. They don't attack you. Oh, dear, dear me. Take it home and look after it as a pet. Let's say hello to you this morning. Uh, good morning to those of you joining us on the YouTube this morning. Good morning to Luke. Good morning, Luke. Welcome along. Uh, morning to Broadcaster. Welcome along to you to our show this morning. Uh, on Periscope, good morning to Harry and uh, Enkuma. Enkuma. I wonder where you are. Enkuma. That sounds, is that a, like a, I don't know what that is. Where would it, Enkuma? Enkuma. It sounds like a name that would be like used on um, uh, The Lion King, doesn't it? Or something like that. <clears throat> or The Jungle Book. Enkuma. Enkuma. Yes, yeah, so I wonder where you're from. Do let us know. Uh, morning, Harry. I'm very well this morning, Harry. Thank you very much. We're firing on all cylinders. I've had my breakfast. I've got my third cup of tea. That's in an hour. Look at the size of these cups. They're very important to keep hydrated, my friend, Harry. Get yourself a cup of tea and join us. We're going to be here for at least four hours today, I think. Over on the Facebook, I'd like to congratulate uh, the lovely Duke Chris, whose birthday it was recently, who for the first time has managed to get the first message up there on the screen. Thank you, Chris. You're either totally dedicated to me or bored. One of the two. I'm not sure which one. I think you're probably dedicated to me, aren't you, Chris? Don't forget, come and collect me as your birthday gift Gift a little later on when we do the karaoke. I'm hosting karaoke tonight, boys and girls. If you're in the North London area, come and join us at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross from 8.30 tonight and every Friday, OK? Morning to Nathan. Nathan's there. The lovely Diane. Third today, Diane. Mm, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, although, of course, you know, if they were gold medals, you wouldn't have got one today, Diane. You would have got the bronze. You would have got the bronze. I suppose it's OK. You know, you take it home to your mum. Look, I got a medal. Did you ever get any medals, Diane? Swimming medals. I got rugby medals somewhere. Yes, rugby, me. I was very butch at school. Very butch indeed. Good morning to Richard Leadham, who's watching in Australia. Morning, Richard. Hope you're having a nice, uh, had a nice day there. He'd be, be going to bed soon, wouldn't he? It's about nine o'clock there, nine, ten o'clock, something like that. Good morning, Christina in Portsmouth. Morning, Ray Reynolds, who'd like to thank us for putting up the Thames logo behind us when we do the nighttime shows downstairs. I was with you last night, around about uh, half past 11. We had a, a little bit of a chat downstairs last night, didn't we? But uh, for some reason, the nighttime shows, people keep coming up and think, coming on and thinking there's some sort of couch auction. <clears throat> and I'm not quite sure what all that's about. <laughs> They're quite mad. They're all very, very mad. But they think there's a couch auction going on at night. I'm not quite sure what the hell all that's about, but it's very, it's quite amusing. It is quite amusing. Don't forget to switch off your set and remove the plug. No, no, dear, especially if you live in a tent. Don't turn off yet, for God's sake, man. We can't afford to lose viewers. It's few enough as it is. What have we got, about nine million at the moment? It is million, incidentally. That's not a single number. They just can't fit million. If you look carefully at the box, they can't fit million in, in that box. That means nine million or whatever it is at the moment. I never really look at the numbers. Uh, good morning to Kim up in Lincolnshire. I should be up there in a few weeks for my Christmas celebrations. Morning to Lewis Bannerman. Good morning, Lewis. Will you be singing tonight? Come on, here is a challenge for you, Lewis. You need to do a new song tonight. Yes. A new song from you, Lewis, tonight. And can we have a sort of a reasonably fast one? No ballads, dear. No ballads, thank you. Morning, Joss. Morning, Joss. He's over there in Australia as well. Uh, Adam, the plumber's there. Hard at work. Good morning, Colin. Uh, Wayne Martin <clears throat> says you don't eat animals, but you kill a carrot. Carrots are not animals, darling. Do they have faces? Except for the one on the Audi advert, which I quite like. I like the Audi advert, do you? With the two little carrots that fall in love, it brought a tear to my glass eye, boys and girls. Oh, we love the carrots advert on Audi. Uh, there you go. See, Chris belongs to you, heart and soul. I know that. 
I know that joke. Oh, do you know, I can feel my lips. My lips are tingling now, ready to give you your massive birthday kiss. Right on the lips, Duke. And I shall make sure for lunch I have a nice big bowl of raw garlic before I see you later. <laughs> what breath is it you said I had the other day? Best not to put that on. <laughs> Oh, Chris, you're a diamond, you are. Morning, James. Is the quiz on next Wednesday at the King's Head? Yes, James. I'll be back at the King's Head next week. In fact, I've got a little quiz story to tell you in a minute. So I hang around there. Uh, I wasn't there this week because I was at the BBC Radio London Soul Night Out with Tony Blackburn on Wednesday, which I uh, enjoyed very much, actually. I'll tell you a little bit about it, but I do talk uh, a lot more about that on Monday's Music and Chat Show, which I recorded last night. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock every Monday morning. Uploadradio.com. Music and talk as well. OK, every Monday morning, uploadradio.com. If you can't be there at 10 o'clock on Monday morning, uh, last week's show or this week's show and the, the several previous ones are all available on the Upload Radio player. Go to uploadradio.com, click on Find a Show in the top left-hand corner somewhere, click on C and you'll see the Chris Reardon Show. Click on that <clears throat> and there's about five or six, I think there's about five or six shows there, uh, including the most recent one over there. You can listen, listen at leisure. Listen at leisure. Um, Ray's looking for a Poufay in the couch auction. Well, I haven't got a Poufay available, I'm afraid. Poufays are really expensive. I was in Arad's once. I was in Arad's once. There was this Poufay for like two and a half thousand pounds. I mean, your feet aren't that precious, are they? Especially not yours, Ray. I bet there's a few bunions on there that have had to be cut off before, have they? Huh? <laughs> I was. Now, the name will remain nameless. OK, but I was doing amateur talent show <clears throat> um, in the Black Cat once. I was hosting it, actually. I was hosting amateur talent show in the Black Cat. This is about 20 years ago. And I went in the dressing room and one of the artists had a sharp knife and they were literally cutting lumps off their foot. <laughs> oh, God. That is absolutely true. That is. I can't mention the name of the person who it was. <clears throat> it wasn't like a well-known person. They were well-known within the black cab itself. But one of the artists who was going to appear on the amateur talent show actually was cutting lumps off their feet. Do you have that done, Ray? Do you go to a, a chiropodist? Can you spell that? A chiropodist. Good morning to uh, actor Ragu, who joins us uh, this morning on uh, YouTube. Welcome along to our little, little bit of fun that we have uh, every morning. Uh, Luke says, no tea. Uh, do you not drink tea then? Come on, Lu come on, um, uh, Lewis. You need to do a new song today, please. After uh, uh, tonight, after you've done my tea, Lewis looks after the tea that um, uh, I have at the uh, central station. They don't always do it, you know. It's Lewis looks after me with the tea and Guy. They're about the only two that do it. The rest of them have to make it myself now. You know, they don't notice as I come in. Everyone else, you know. Uh, uh, drag acts and singers, you know, they're upstairs with the glasses of beer and bottles of wine. All I ask for is a tup cup of tea. Do I get it? Only if Lewis or Guy is there. What a shame. Greetings to uh, Weedway on uh, Periscope this morning. <clears throat> Gary Butler, is the mineral ball for sale? No, Gary. I, I gave your daughter one of those, didn't I? Your daughter, I bought your daughter a mirror ball. How many do you want in the house? The whole thing will be spinning around and flashing everywhere. You don't want to upset your neighbour again. <laughs> That's my nephew, Gary Butler. He um, <clears throat> he and his wife uh, had a bit of an extension built on the side of the house uh, for, the, for their little uh, disabled girl. And the neighbour was going ape. He was absolutely going ape. He was. Kept complaining to the police and all this and the other. police went round there and shut him up. <laughs> Good! Rude, dear. Rude. Good. So, um, let me tell you. Oh, please, can I have tea? Thank you, Mac. My hair, actually, this hair is long now. OK, I have my hair cut. Someone was asking me this the other week. How many times do I have my hair cut? And uh, every two weeks, <clears throat> without fail, every two weeks, usually on a Tuesday before I go to Slimming World. Well, I didn't go this week, unfortunately, because I was doing the um, thing at the hospital. 
<coughs> uh, in London. But yes, I have my haircut every two weeks. It's a bit long at the moment. Now, you know when it's too long because the bald bit in the middle, see, okay? <laughs> the more you let it grow, the, the more the bald bit stands out like a sore thumb. That's absolutely true, that is, all right? So if you've got short hair, and blokes will tell you that, if you've got, if you've got a bit of bald deck, keep it as short as possible, and the bald bit in the middle won't notice so much, Mac. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah, we had Central being having a bit of a problem with video calls last night. Two came in, and then we couldn't get any through after that, could we? And we don't have video open this morning, boys and girls. That's only on the nighttime show. However, during the morning, we have a phone number that you can call in, uh, phone or Skype. The Skype is United Kingdom Talk. Or one word, United Kingdom Talk, or there's a phone number as well that you can call in on, 020-8144-3477. Local London number, not premium rate, okay? 020-8144-3477. All righty. <clears throat> Max says, I t oh, oh, I've just realised who you are. I've just realised who you are. Silly sod I am. Mac, Mac on there is my hairdresser. That is the bloke who owns the hairdressers. Sorry, Mac, I just realised who you are there. Gary, yeah, every Tuesday, every Tuesday. Nice, look at this, nice trim. It's only 10 quid. 10 quid, that's all I get. I, I pay for this. That's at uh, Max Hairdressers in Wokingham, which you come into Wokingham. It's a bit of a mess at the moment because they're doing a lot of building work uh, on the right-hand side, so they keep doing it into one lane. And it can be very busy through there. But <coughs> literally, as you come into Wokingham, you kind of go around a corner. There's a big church on the corner. It's a pretend church. Church of England, dear. Church, it's a pretend church. It's not Catholic. Not Catholic. You know, where I go, around the corner, Corpus Christi. Pretend church on the corner. Church of England, OK? And um, you come around the corner... And it's just there on the left, just next to the estate agent. That's where Max hairdresser is. I just realised who you are. Sorry about that, Mac. <laughs> Okie doke. Uh, let's go to the phone. Mark's on the line. Good morning, Mark. Morning, Chris. How are you? You sound like you've just woken up. I have only just woken up, but I'm quite awake. Oh, yeah? Well, you want to have a cup of tea? Nice, strong cup of tea. I've got Arad's tea oh. downstairs. Arad's. Arad's, dear. Oh, I, love, I do love a cup of tea, but I also love a cup of Kenko coffee. Oh, you're a coffee drinker, are you? Early in the morning when I first wake up. Well, it sounds like you have. I, love, I, I was up late last night because I couldn't watch your show when it was on. So literally when you finished, I started watching it. Did you stay again. up all last night? <coughs> yeah, and also, you know that a guy who's in Texas, Danny? Danny in Texas, yes. I also got, I also got talking to him. Oh, are you talking to so each I other? Is it like a chat-up thing or just a friendly thing? No, just a friendly thing. Right. And so I didn't get sleep till like half past three. There's nothing wrong with that, mate. I used to be up all mm -hmm. night talking to people. Used to be. But um, <coughs> last night, what did I do? Last night, I finished a show last night from the chair. <clears throat> and then I had uh, I had some spaghetti last night. I opened a tin of Heinz spaghetti. Had that. Oh, a spaghetti bit. hoops? Yeah. No, no, no. Just I normal. love spaghetti hoops. Normal, um, normal long spaghetti. I don't know what you... Well, it's just, oh, yeah. You know, normal spaghetti. So I had a tin of that and um, watched uh, Dynasty on Netflix and went to bed. I'm, I, I, I said weeks ago that the new Dynasty is rubbish, and it is, but I've been hooked in. You get hooked into it. <clears throat> There's another one on Netflix called Sons of Anarchy. It's about bikers. Sons of Anarchy. This, OK, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that, that was rubbish. The first time I watched it, but I thought I'm going to stick this out. I'm going to watch it. Yes. And now I'm just hooked. <laughs> is it any good? Or is it kind of? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, oh, it's good. right. There's I when it's I about... flicker. I don't actually have Netflix myself. It's my sister's password that that she uh -huh. uses. I checked that out if that was legal. I thought, well, that can't be legal. Actually. Oh no, because you can you can have more than one account on any Netflix account. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Actually, like they, on our they, family yeah. Netflix account, and they don't. This, Five users. Yeah, they don't mind if you share it among family because generally what happens is that after a while, you sign up anyway. Because the thing is, only one person can be watching the account at any one time. So sometimes, mm -hmm. certainly during the daytime, I might click on my name because you set up your own name, don't you? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I, my name on Netflix is Unks, U-N-C-S, which is short for uncle. Uh, good yep. morning to Agis this morning. Morning, Agis, on the Periscope. 
And um, so if, if I, I can click on it and it will start playing and within about three seconds it will come up, sorry, too many people are watching this account and you can't watch. So I, I yeah, usually watch yeah, Netflix. I mean, somebody's, watching your, somebody's watching on your channel. Yes. No, <laughs> normally I watch um, uh, Netflix very late at night when my sister's gone to bed because they go to bed early at like nine o'clock. Well, my uncle who I live with, because he's up in the morning at like half past five, he goes to bed at like eight o'clock. What, in the morning? No, at night time. Yeah, he gets up at half past five in the morning. Oh, OK. What, do, what does he do? He's, he is a lead property manager for a company called Countrywide. Right, OK. I've heard of Countrywide. The, is that Butter? The, no, no it's a estate agent. Oh, is it? I thought it was Butter. <laughs> no, they, they, own, they own, like... We don't eat Butter. Right. Not if you're on Slimming World. It is a banned no, food. Know. You know your spaghetti that you ate last night mm -hmm. was that sin free? Yes, tins of tins of um, Heinz spaghetti and tins of Heinz baked beans are both mm -hmm. sin free. Yes. Is it just like spaghetti and baked beans from Heinz that's sin free, or is it any baked beans? No, you have to be quite specific with the brand and all that because they all do it slightly differently. Um, what one do you want to know? Have you have you not got the uh, Slimming World app? No, I don't do Slimming World anymore. I used to, and I lost quite a lot of weight. As okay. soon as you come off it, <clears throat> well, of it's course. back straight back on. Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, if you, I suppose, really, in a way, you could, <coughs> you could not go to the, um, to the groups as long as you Mate. stuck to what you were doing. If you, yeah, I, I try. But you know, it when... almost. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, obviously, they don't. But it almost by going to the group. <coughs> Excuse me. You um, you would be shamed. Yeah, but you you're not shamed. You're not made to feel bad or naughty or anything uh -huh. like that. But in your own head, I suppose if I went back there Tuesday and I'd put on like three or four pounds, and you you know how you've done it. I, I can't find the food thing on here. Now. One minute. Yeah. Find a group seven day. Where's the food thing gone on here? Oh, What's this you. whole thing about the chair? Where did that come from? Hang on a minute. I'm just trying to find your... your. Um, I can't find the food thing on it. Oh, more. There it is, more. Where is it? Less? No. Where's where's the... Where's the sin counter gone? I've lost the sin count. I can't find the sin counter now. It usually... I'd, reckon, in... I'd recommend you as well. Have you got the app on your phone? Yes. I'm going to say, the app on the phone's amazing. Well, it is, but they, it did have, like, your, you could put in what food you wanted to know. Yeah. Well, I don't know where that's gone. Where's the... I did, when, I, when I worked in my last job at the co local college as a student union president, Yeah. Um, I had a lot of time, but now I'm working in the, like, pub industry. It takes a lot of your time. Well, I, I can't find where the sins have gone, where the sin count has gone. BMI calculator, what's that? That's not it, is it? Settings. No. Well, I don't know where that's gone. I've lost it. I've what was this whole it. thing about that chair? Okay, can we stick to one bloody subject at a time here? <laughs> Christ's sake, man. Well, you can't find I'm it. I'm trying to save you some well, time, Christopher. I'm trying to sort of something. I'm trying to find this for you. Look, it's for you, not me. You. Well, I can't find it. I don't know what's happened to that. Well, I should be more grateful, I suppose. Be, always be grateful. <laughs> right, now... Um, Yes, you, you, you would never, ever be shamed by any member of Simming World going in there. But if you want to go for a while and then you went back and you weighed yourself in five pounds, then when they're going around, oh, you've put five pounds on those. In your head, you kind of shame yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's possibly what stops you put in, putting, putting the weight on again. Now, um, yeah. even though you should be able to do it, you know, even if you don't go to the groups... But I think it helps. I really do help it goes to the group with, uh, with the groups. Uh, salam to uh, Layex on um, Periscope this morning. So uh, Cordy says Slimming World. I think is just like it, she, it reminds her of little little Britain. And Cordy oh, likes fat fighters. Cordy fat fighters. Fat fighters. What do you want to eat? Dust. Dust. <laughs> Dust. Dust. <laughs> See when I used to go to Slimming World. Yeah. I used to find the meetings a little bit patronising sometimes. Because the way the lady did it, it's like, if you put £2 on, 
I mean, they used to used to give you a clap for it. Yeah, but they would say you've put two pound on, but altogether you've lost one stone five. Yeah, it's all yeah. about making you feel better. <clears throat> yeah, it just made me laugh because of how excited the, the the consulting lady got about people losing weight. Well, it is exciting, isn't it? It is exciting. You yes, walk in there as like as she made it be. What have I been? June, July, August, September, October. So I've been going about four and a half months and I've lost nearly two stone. Oh, that, you, you do really well. That is exciting. It's exciting it's for me. It's got you, yeah. Hey? Well, it is, yeah. I yes. Suppose. Well, go on. Go and make yourself a cup of tea and wake up, dear, all right? Can I ask you one more question? Yes, of course. <clears throat> Where did this auction thing come from? I've no idea. I've no idea. It's people just uh, having a little bit of a laugh, I think, on the on, on, on our nighttime shows. It doesn't happen during the morning, only on the nighttime shows for some reason. It's like it's like it's a different calibre of people at night time. I, I, it's like I, you've got two audiences. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you see, and that's the thing now, I could um um I used to do like a scheduled show. Ages mm -hmm. it's ages ago now, where I would be here at like Nine o'clock every morning or ten o'clock every right, morning. In, okay, in, so in, in, ten o'clock would be sorry. showtime. Um, I found that very restrictive. Remember, it's not uh -huh. like a job that you've got to be there at that time. Yeah, yeah. And I might get up a bit late, and then I got to rush around, you know, to be up here for ten o'clock. And I don't like rushing mm -hmm. around anymore. I like to take things nice and easy. You know, if you tell me to be somewhere at ten o'clock, I'll be there at ten o'clock. But I'll make yeah. sure I'm up and all that. And I thought, oh, it's a bit restrictive. This, so uh, that's why I do as and when. Now, the other benefit of that is you pick up different people at different times of the day. Uh -huh. Some it's people... like in the morning, you've got the respectable people like Diane and Wendy. Diane and Wendy. And then at night time... Yeah, unrespectable people like yourself. You've got, yeah, you've got the respectable <laughs> like yourself. <laughs> You're quite right. Yeah, Ghastly so different people. people. And there are some people that are there all the time. Uh, yourself, for example... Um, mm -hmm. Lewis is often there, you know. At Actually, nighttime. I've got nothing better to do, dear. No, nothing better to do. Well, go and do something <laughs> then and stop wasting your time talking to me. You have a nice day, Mark, all right? Yeah, you too. Cheerio now. There we are, Mark Bye. calling from North... Is it Northampton? Northampton, I think, is in Northamptonshire, OK? Um, bum, 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 bum. Lewis gets his hair cut every four weeks. It's been about eight. Oh, Lewis... Don't save money on haircuts, darling. Good morning, Billy Mack. Uh, who won the couch auction? There was no couch auction, Billy. We haven't got a couch to auction, I'm afraid. There's no auction happening here. Nothing. Nothing. However, if you want to donate by PayPal, it's chris at chrisreardon.co.uk for your donations by PayPal to the show, OK? Um, Cordy agrees with us. Dynasty is, is, is the acting's not good, especially Fallon. Isn't she awful? I wrote down a few notes about Dynasty, actually, if you want it. And uh, the, the, the thing is with Dynasty, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, Cordy. OK, it's my sister that brought this to my attention and I didn't realise. Do you recognise the butler on Dynasty or not? Let me ask you that question. Anyone who watching Dynasty on Netflix, do you reckon the butler or not? Chris, why are you confused, darling? Chris is getting a little bit confused there. Have another pill, love. You'll be all right after that, OK? Anyway, do you recognise um, the butler on Dynasty? Now, so type in your answers to that one, and I'll uh, come to that in a moment. But I was wrong. I was wrong with Dynasty. It's very bad acting, but I'm afraid I love it. <clears throat> I did not think I was going to get into it. My sister hasn't got into it. She says it's so bad I can't even watch it. I've actually got into it. Fallon is just evil. She plays everyone, and you probably know some people like this, she plays everyone for her own benefit and for her own benefit alone. But sometimes she comes unstuck and people don't want to help her anymore. Uh, Blake's, uh, Fallon is Blake's daughter and Crystal's stepdaughter. Crystal's all right. Crystal's just as evil as Fallon. Um... The crystal in the new dynasty is very different to the crystal in the old dynasty, I think. Not just the fact that it's a different person playing a character. She's just... Like, I've been, I remember the crystal in the original series wasn't really a horrible person. It was like everyone attacking her. But this crystal is a bit more, you know, she's as bad as the rest of them sometimes. Um, Fallon and Crystal hate each other. 
Fallon seems to be doing it with just about everyone, you know. <laughs> She's doing it with everyone on there. Uh, Stephen is gay. He's the nice one. Stephen is really nice. He cares about the environment and about people. But there's another gay character in there who was doing it <laughs> with Stephen, who is just very, very dodgy. And actually, um, he seems to somehow move into the Carrington's household OK, because the, the, the other gay character, I can't remember his name for a moment. Very, very good looking. He's really good looking. He's moved into the Carrington household because he is Crystal's nephew, you know, and it, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So do watch Dynasty now. Let's see if anyone recognised um, um, the butler. Um, yes, it's Alan Dale Jim from Neighbours. Correct. Correct. So uh, I think that's wonderful. So the, the butler in Dynasty is actually Jim Robinson from Neighbours uh, from years ago when it first started. Remember Jim Robinson? He's now the butler in Dynasty and he plays the character very well. Very, very dry. Very, very dry, which is set in Atlanta, not Denver. Did I say Denver? I can't remember if I've said Denver or not. Uh, Duke says, I can't keep up, dear. I need a coffee and a fag. Stuck at work. I feel sorry for you, man. Are you doing betting slips? Chris works in a betting shop. He, he, I've suffered some abuse. Do you mind, Chris, if I tell them? He's got a little bit of a problem with his back and legs. And uh, someone insulted him, calling him a disabled um, something or something the other day. I hope you slung him out. Completely unnecessary to say things like that. Anyway, hope you're well. Uh, Shane. Morning to Shane Cameron. He was there last night. Morning, Shane. Uh, Ray says the respectable Ray, Wendy Diane and Ray are here. Stand by for the... For the what? The horny Ray from Blackpool this weekend. Oh, that's a bit strong at this time of the morning, Ray. I can't ever see you as in that sort of way. I'm sorry. <laughs> Billy, uh, often, yeah, we often talk about the new Star Trek. The new Star Trek Discovery is excellent. But we were talking last night. I was talking to someone last night. Actually, let me see if I can bring up the conversation. <clears throat> I was talking to about someone last night about the Star Trek, the new Star Trek Discovery. And actually, in America, not many people have seen it. Thank you, Warren. That's it, Warren, who's... um Oh, why can't I bring up those messages? Oh, there it is. There it is. One moment, one moment. Just a minute now. Um, it's here somewhere. One moment. Uh, oh, I thought it was... Oh, maybe it wasn't Warren. Must have been someone else. Um, yeah, it must have been someone else. Sorry. I thought it was Warren who sent in the message. Um, but yes, yeah, Star Trek in America. You've got to sign up, apparently, to something else. Uh, so hardly anyone is seeing it over there. But I think it's really good. The new Star Trek Discovery, now available on the Netflix. Thank you very much. Uh, Cordy, Cordy, thank you. Sammy Joe. Sammy Joe is a bloke. Stephen's bit of stuff in the original. It was a woman. Oh, I don't remember now. It's a long, long time ago. It is a long, long time ago. Good morning to Wayney, who joins us. Uh, morning, Wayney. So, uh, Wednesday night, I went to the BBC Radio Soul Night Out, boys and girls, at uh, Coco's in Camden Town. Now, I do talk, as I say, about that quite a lot on Monday's Music and Chat Show, which is at 10 o'clock on the Upload Radio. But just to give you the general gist, it's a big night that they do once a year now. At uh, and generally in Camden Town, always in Camden Town at Coco's. Uh, the venue itself is beautiful. I don't know if you've ever been in Coco's nightclub. Yeah, it used to be, of course, a theatre years ago, the Camden Palais. <clears throat> but it's absolutely beautiful in there, and it's all painted red, and we go in. There's a big stage at the front there. Tony Blackburn comes on and introduces um, several acts. It all goes out live on BBC Radio London. You can actually listen to the whole show on there, which is about three hours long, OK, by going to BBC Radio London uh, website, uh, look for one of those Listen Again things and look for Soul Night Out, and you can listen to the whole show. All a soul acts from the 70s and 80s. Uh, and these are the people that I touched. I touched on the hand. I, I think it was on the hand anyway. I can't remember now. I don't drink, so... No one was drinking in it. It was packed in there. It was absolutely packed in there. And the funny thing is, this Soul Night Out is something that Radio London used to do in the 1980s. 
Tony Blackburn had a soul show on BBC Radio London in the 80s in the morning. He did 9 till 12.30 or 1 o'clock, I think it was. Anyway, he would come on every morning and play all these wonderful soul records. Loose Ends, Rufus and Chaka Khan, um, uh, Luther Vandross. It would be all music like that with his personality in between all the songs. And it was a fantastic show. Phone calls as well used to come in. People would ring in. He'd talk to them on the phone. And it was slightly risque. At that time, he would he would kind of get to that line and it would be lots, lots of double entendres. A bit similar to this show, uh, but much better, of course, because it is the great Tony Blackburn. Oh, yes, our leader. Our leader. So this was every morning. And they started doing the Radio London Solna out. So once a week, they would go to a nightclub, generally uh, the Hammersmith Palais, the Camden Palais, now Coco's, uh, the National Theatre Kilburn and the Empire in Leicester Square are the ones I remember. Can't remember if there was any others. I went to Hammersmith Palais and the Empire in Leicester Square. Uh, often I went to the Hammersmith Palais one. It was every Thursday night uh, and uh, from about nine till nine till one in the morning, something like that. And between 11 and 12, it would go on the radio just for that hour. OK, <clears throat> so that went on for years and then it stopped and there was a big gap of about 25 years. OK, and four years ago, they started bringing it back. Tony Blackburn's Radio London Soul Night Out once a year to raise money for children in need. And I've been to the last two. So they had one. They had another, which I went to last year. They didn't have one. Because uh, the BBC gave Tony a bit of jip about some some rubbish that was non-existent. So he lost all his jobs. And he was treated very badly by the BBC. Very, very badly indeed. But uh, he's back on there now. Um, he, he, I mean, how can you... <laughs> What can he have done? He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. But they needed... A, I think they needed a scapegoat. I think they needed a scapegoat. And he was it, unfortunately. And he got caught up in this thing. And they sacked him for over a year. Anyway, he's back on there now. And very happy. Um, and we're all very happy that he's back on there. And I think, you know, yeah, you just forget it and move on. You can't just keep going on and on about stuff all the time. Uh, I, I feel, anyway. Uh, so... It comes back once a year now, and this year it came back again, and I got a ticket, and I went there, and it was just fantastic. Fantastic. Um, but with this difference that uh, between 7 and 10, for the whole three hours of the show, uh, it went on the radio. And as I say, you can go to the uh, BBC Radio London website, one of those iPlayer-type things, click, uh, type in Soul Night Out, you'll find it there, click on there, listen to the whole three hours of the show, which is uh, excellent. And he comes on the stage and does stupid things like throwing out balloons and whistles and uh, T-shirts and that sort of thing. And he brings the artists on. And we had, and I touched, George McRae. George McRae. La da 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 da, rock your baby. You know that one? Rock your baby, George McRae. Look it up later. He was on stage. He was hilarious. So he's a, he's a lovely chap. Uh, his hair done all nice, uh, all in a red suit. And he must be about 70 years old. And these women, not women, not girls, women, all at the front screaming their heads off. And this woman behind me, she's jabbed me in the ribs because ribs, we'd got talking to these four old ladies at the front there. And we're all of an age. I mean, quite frankly, it was like a young, not old, like a young pensioner's day out. When We're all not quite at pensioner age yet. But when I looked around, I think I was one of the youngest people in there. <laughs> if you look, I don't know if you saw my uh, the video that I did on Wednesday night. But if you look, there's a couple of audience shots in there. And you won't see anyone in there under the age of about 50. Honestly, the old security staff, they're standing around. They've got nothing to do. You know, there's no fights, no drugs. No one's really drunk out of their heads. We're all just in there to, to, to have a good time. And we did. Believe me, we did the whole place. It was like a young pensioner's or, or a pre-pensioner's night out. I mean, what would be better than that? I reckon pensioners would love something like that. Obviously, you wouldn't see the likes of Beyonce on the stage, I'm sure. 
you know, but you could have the, the older ones on there, like 60s and all that, and sort of, you know, now and again, you'd get all these old people's homes come down, descend on a nightclub to, um, uh, to a venue. Well, it's better than sitting in one of those blooming chairs with the wings, just sitting there watching telly for hours on end, isn't it? God's sake, we had a fantastic time in there. So George McRae came on, and he's talking to the ladies at the top, singing his song, Rock Your Baby. And then he did thrusting movements with his hips. Well, the women went crazy, dear. I thought knickers were about to be thrown. I really do. <laughs> of course, I get the same sort of thing at my karaoke. You know, people like Chris. Uh, is he still with us this morning? He might have gone by now. Chris, he, he, can, he can't usually... um. Uh, 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 stomach the entire show, I'm afraid. But Chris, you know, he's often sitting at the bar, and he might throw his underpants onto the stage at me sometimes. You know, you know, they do, but that's just one of those things. You know, as a star, as an international celebrity and star, I understand that. I understand that. You know, you want to be that bit closer to me, don't you, man? Um, uh, so George McRae is is on the red suit, and he put his hand out, and I touched George McRae, boys and girls. I shook his hand, George McRae, on that stage. Yes, yes. We also had uh, Shack Attack. I think I shook the hand of the lead singer of Shack Attack, which was excellent. We got a call coming in from London. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, no, that's not worked. OK, um, so Shack Attack. Uh, there was Shalimar. Shalimar was there. There was The Real Thing. You to me are everything, the sweetest song that I could sing, oh baby. I shook the hand of one of the members of The Real Thing. Who else did I shake? Did I shake? Did I write it down there? One moment, please. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember who else it was now. There was another two. But more importantly than all us, I shook the hand of Mr. Tony Blackburn. Oh, yes. So I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy. It was a fantastic night out. It really was. I did do... Uh, actually, it's quite a long video. It's about a 23-minute video, I think, uh, that I made on that particular day with my journey there, meeting up with my friend from uh, an Essex radio station, Peter Ward, who uh, I met up with. That's who I went with. And uh, oh, someone said to me, uh, excuse me, do you mind me asking something? There was one of the girls at the front. Are you to an item? And I said, no, 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 we're just friends. It's funny, isn't it? Some, sometimes people always assume just because there's two gay blokes out together, that we're, they're with each other. You know, people often think that about me and my best mate. But I don't think so, darling. Not in a thousand years. Absolutely not. No, we were there 25 years ago. Never again. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, fantastic night. Absolutely fantastic night. Let's have a look at your messages. Uh, Josh said, did George McRae go down with a broken hip? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think he did. did. Did he have a broken hip? He, he Possibly. I don't know anything about it. Oh, Chris is still there. You are still there, Chris. I'm surprised you've usually gone after five minutes because you're bored. Chris gets bored very easily. You wouldn't be bored if you was in my life, Chris. I'm sure you wouldn't. Um, morning to Richard. Ah, there we go. Uh, George McRae is now 74 years old. Thank you, Richard. 74, and he's still on the stage, and he, he looked fantastic. Of course, George McRae has the advantage that he's black, which means you never know how old black people are. They're so lucky. No, no lines on the face or anything like that, is there? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Cordy said they did. They hung out Tony Blackburn to dry the BBC. And um, I suppose if it wasn't for the job, he wouldn't do anything to to, to do with them at all now. Uh, call in if you want to. 0208 is uh, the phone number, boys and girls. OK, what's the time? How long have I been chatting? Oh, 43 minutes. Funnily enough, I was talking to Peter Ward, um, uh, the guy who does hospital radio. No, sorry, yeah, what does he do? No, he does a radio thing. He doesn't really do hospital radio. I just say that because it winds him up. <laughs> I like to say people to wind people up. <laughs> I like to see their little faces going all red and getting angry and the vein appearing at the top of the hair. Hello, Kiki T. Welcome along. Uh, try again, Chris. It's only a local London number. 020, it should be all right. Try again if you want to, OK? 0208 um, It worked for someone else a moment ago. Perhaps you hit the wrong button. I don't know. I, oh, sorry. Tony Blackburn's 74. How old's George McRae? I wonder if we can see that. 
how old how old is George McRae so, oh George McRae is 73 there and there's a picture of him there George McRae is 73 years old uh, Rocky Baby is just one of the songs ah that call's coming through now there we go good morning Chris good morning Chris Ah, it's working now. You sound very butch today, Chris. I always sound butch, thank you very much. So do you. you. You don't sound like that when you're in the pub. You've got more of a squeaky voice. Oh, fair enough. I've got to have alcohol in my system. <laughs> ah, lovely to hear you. Now, are you bringing a little toothbrush today? Because don't forget, if you're coming tonight, you're to receive your birthday present, which is me. Is there garlic involved? Is there garlic involved? I can bring garlic if you want. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I smelt your breath before, garlic. Do you remember that? Tell them about it. Tell them. Oh, so we, where was we in Central Station? We was. Yeah, so you was hosting karaoke, and you came to say hello, as you usually do, and I get a whiff of garlic, and I'm sniffing it, sniffing, sniffing, and I was like, Chris, come here. I was like, breathe on me. So you breathed on me, breathed on me, and I was just like, wow. <laughs> Go and brush your teeth or put some chewing gum in, mate. <laughs> I did the same the other week, actually, Chris. You weren't in there. Uh, you know, uh, non-Irish Mary from Ireland and yeah. Maureen, they were sitting at a table and it, it was quite early, a couple of Mondays ago. And uh, I was all set up and ready, so I got my cup of tea and sat down at the table and uh, I was having a chat with them and uh, I went back over there and Mary come up. She said, can I have a little word? I said, yeah. She said, I've got these for you. And she went in her handbag and pulled me out some spearmint Tic Tacs. I said, well, what are they for? She said, well, I didn't like to say anything, but me and Maureen noticed that you've got a bit of garlic breath tonight. <laughs> See, I'm glad I'm not the only one, Chris. <laughs> the I thought I was just being shady, but I won't. Well, the reason is, I don't know if it's the amount of garlic you put in something or not, but I, when, I'm, when I've done, I, I don't suppose you do cooking at your young age, do you? Do you cook from scratch? I bet you don't. I, I, I tend to sometimes. Oh, you do sometimes? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I open this bag of frozen garlic. I don't measure it. I just put the whole bag in. And then, wow. then there's got to be like three or four bulbs of garlic chopped up. Not, but not, not cloves, bulbs. 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 bulbs get, get, get the facts right. Of, of garlic chopped up in that bag, Chris. <laughs> wow. There's, so you, there's taken it to a whole new level now, isn't there? Uh, it, oh, it's so much easier. You haven't got to get... Because that smell gets on your fingers, doesn't it? It's horrible, that is. Oh, it's, it's a bit, like, it's a bit like smoking, I yeah, suppose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't mind the smell of nicotine on someone's fingers, to be honest. Really? I, I, honestly, I, I, as a smoker, I despise it. When I used to smoke, which is... That's a long time. Which was which was longer ago. That how mm -hmm. old are you? 20 what? I was 27 the other day. 27. So I probably gave up smoking just as you were being born. Isn't wow. that a lovely I... sport? Isn't that a lovely sport? And I, if I wasn't, if I didn't have a cigarette, I would sniff my fingers and that would be just as nice. Wow. Do you ever sniff your fingers at all? Not at all, no. No, perhaps that's wise. I yeah. Don't know, I, don't. I don't even smoke in my house now either. You do I what? smoke outside. Oh, good I, lad. I, I hate the smell of it. Yeah, good lad. Even when I was smoking... Um, I noticed the smell of smoking, certainly in bars. And the funny thing is, when we stopped the smoking thing in bars, um, I was so pleased about that. As we were getting closer to the date, I noticed it more and more. And I actually thought about giving up all the stuff I do and finding a job that doesn't involve standing in a room. Well, you, I mean, for the moment you walk in there, you were smoking, weren't you? You didn't actually it's second need Secondhand smoke. It's free, it's, free, it's, it's free cigarettes. Free, free cigarette smoking, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you find most people your age are smokers or, or, or not? Um, without sounding really funny, I think it, it depends where you're brought up. I, I personally think. Right. I, I think probably, probably my friends, they smoke and they're around my age bracket. So, yeah. Where, where were you brought up then? What, 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 so, I was brought up in Shoreditch. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know that, Chris. Yeah. Gosh, so you was you was near that lovely little club that I used to go to, Chariots. Where? Say that again. That little club that I used to go to, Chariots. That was a lovely place. That was a lovely little club. Oh, it was wonderful. Corner. It was so friendly in there. It really was, Chariots. <laughs> and, of course, Turnmills as well. That's not too far from you as well, is it? That's Turn gone. Mill. Do you know what? My, my parents used to go on about that. And because, obviously, I'm at that age range... 
I, I've never been. No, well, it's gone now. Did they used to go? Uh, my mum used to go, actually. How old is she? Uh, my mum is 58. Oh, so a little bit older than me, then. Yeah. yeah, she must have. I bet she went to gallery. Gallery was the Friday night straight night. Uh, I'm not too sure. Ask her if she used to go to gallery or what night she used to go to. Well, I didn't know that. Good God, Shoreditch. Of course, the house prices there are worth an absolute fortune now. Astronomical, it do, really is. Do they? Do your parents own their own house or are they renting there? Um. So my mum owns hers. I rent. Oh, that will that will be worth an absolute fortune. Her house. What she got? Flat uh, she's got a two-bedroom. A two-bedroom house in Shoreditch? Yeah. That's got to be a million, hasn't it? Um, just hitting about it, yeah. It's got to be a million. What What it, if you, where, What do you live in and how much rent do you pay then? So I live just behind uh, um, Hoxton Square. Wow, yeah, OK. Um, so I share and I pay between 250 Well, I pay about 380 a month. 380 a month. And what do you get for that? So I get all the amenities, I get obviously a double double room ensuite, and that's about it, and obviously the um, bills come separately, so like Wi-Fi, wow. um, gas, electric, council tax. So it's about, about 120, 110? So 100... you're like, all in all, you're looking at about 580 a month altogether. Wow, for a room. Yeah. Just for a room. But it is really, it, it's lovely. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm glad it is. You, have you been there a while, have you? Um, so I moved there since I started with William Hill. OK, yeah. So about seven months now. OK. And is it off so, the main road or are you on a main road? Um, it's just off the main road. It's near, just off... Um, how is it easy to describe? Or, so it's just near St. Monica's Church. Um... No. The square, you go straight down, and it's in literally in the corner of the square. Okay, fair enough. My mate used to live on Columbia Road. That's around there, isn't it? Somewhere? Columbia Road, where the flower market is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he used to live on there in the um, uh, what are they called? Not not council. The the other thing, uh, housing association. He used How, to... Guinness Trust. Yeah. yeah uh, kind of. Yeah, that sort of yeah. thing. Lovely flat inside. Around it, just dire. You it's know, like, do you know what? The old saying is, the council don't build slums, it's the people they put in them. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Oh, you should see it outside. I used to worry when I used to, because he lives up here now, but when I used to go to his house, I would mm. worry if I left at like 11 o'clock at night, simply walking across the road to my car. I didn't feel safe at all there. Couldn't wait to get out. But inside the flats, beautiful. It was just the people around them. Absolutely. Yeah. Ray Reynolds was a DJ at the Bull and Pump in Shoreditch. Do you know that one? I don't no, know. No, whereabouts was that? It, it might be gone now. In the 1980s, he says. Yeah, 1980s. Oh, I've got advice here from Joss in Australia. Now, they, they're, they're big on garlic. and a bit, Garlic and beer in Australia. Uh, to get rid of garlic and onion smell, wash your hands with stainless steel. Well, you can't eat a bit of stainless steel, can you, Joss? What about the really? mouth? What about wow. the mouth? <laughs> it says here, raw garlic cures all ailments. So next time you get a little bit of a problem, uh, 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 Duke, which I'm mm -hmm. sure you've had before, just rub garlic on it and it should disappear. <laughs> rub garlic on your mouth, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely wow. to talk to you, OK? All right, good luck and I'll talk to you soon. Might see you soon. Bye-bye, right, bye -bye. Chris. There we are. First call from uh, Chris has never called in before. That was nice, wasn't it? So someone new call in now and again. Just a second. Let's just do that. Uh... That's done there. Good. Okay, Doug, back to some of your um, uh, messages then. Cordy says a lot of people vape now. Yes, indeed. Um, <clears throat> is it safer or not? We don't really know. It hasn't been around for very long, does it? You know, vaping, really. So I don't know if um, if it does. Uh, Chris, uh, Cordy says she likes your voice, Chris, if you're still with us. Garlic is very good for you. As mentioned by my very good friend Vivian, who sits next to me in church on Sunday. I mentioned to her someone had complained about the garlic and I was thinking about putting less in my food. She said, don't take any notice of them. Put as much in as you want. You can never have enough garlic. In fact, I might do my rice risotto for dinner today if I've got time. Good. Um, 
Now, where were we? We were talking about the Radio London Soul Night Out. I've talked about that, haven't I? I think uh, I think we're almost done today, to be honest, aren't we? What's the time there? Oh, we've nearly done an hour, haven't we? I was talking to my friend uh, Peter Ward, who does the uh, hospital radio in uh, in Basildon there. Garlic, chew parsley. Ah, uh, yes, I've tried chewing parsley. Oh, that's vile. It's worse than the smell of the garlic. Chew it. Have you chewed parsley before? It's not nice. Oh, it's not nice. I was talking to my friend Peter, and he said... um. He said what I think, actually. He said what I think. He said, um, do you think uh, an hour song is a bit, a show is a bit too long? Which I usually do about an hour. And I said, actually, yes, I do. I do think an hour show is long. I, I, I think half an hour of these shows that I do would be the ideal time. But the trouble is you get carried away. You know, if you're halfway through a call or something like that, you know, you're chatting away. You don't want to be watching the clock. And it gets to half an hour. But actually, I agree with them. Because if you look at... if, if I mean, I'm not led by numbers, am I? This is the thing. But if you watch numbers, they, they kind of start tailing off pretty quickly after, after like, half an hour. And you might be... I mean, I don't know how many are with us now. Um, I can look if you... Well, you can probably see. I can't see how many people are with us at the moment. But let's have a quick look. Um... <clears throat> it's prob my guess is about eight now. Okay, my guess is about eight. So let's let's ten. Okay, so ten now. Probably at the beginning there were like eighteen, twenty, maybe a little bit more than that. You know, but they certainly tail off after half an hour. And uh, Pete was, uh, I I said to Pete, probably half an hour is the maximum that you want to do. On YouTube, you'd speak to YouTube people. They recommend. Okay, this is absolutely true. They recommend videos on YouTube are no longer than three minutes long because people lose interest. And that's certainly truer of, I think, the younger people. This is of no disrespect to anyone young who's watching the show at the moment, but they have very, very short attention spans. I can even relate that to the DJing that I did over the years where I would usually used to be able to put in a, a 12 inch mix of something. And this this song would go on for seven minutes and people would be dancing the whole seven minutes. Now you can only play a three minute song. And after a minute and a half, they're coming out. Oh, what's next? What's next? They're already bored of it after a minute and a half. Similar to these chat shows, I suppose, really, you know, after a couple of minutes, you know, people are bored and they move on. But on the other hand, the longer you go, more people join in. Now, I could probably do the first half of the show again now. And a lot of people won't have heard that yet. So there is like swings and roundabouts. But I actually think Peter's quite right. You know, the maximum length of the show should really be about 30 minutes and not an hour as it is now. I don't know what you think about that. I know a lot of you have been there for the whole show this morning. I do know that. So perhaps you, you disagree with that, but probably 30 minutes would be better. I mean, would that bother you if we just did 30 minutes? I don't know if I could stick to it. You know, even, even at this stage, we've been talking now for nearly an hour. Um, I've Have I got through my list of stuff? No, I haven't, you see. I haven't got through my list of things to talk about. Not only that, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six news stories up there that were standing by to be read to you. We've, had, we've only done one. There were seven up there a while ago. We've only done one story. Richard reckons an hour. Um, Yeah, I mean, you know, usually it is about an hour long, these shows. They're generally about an hour long. I think probably half an hour would be better. Uh, even Chris says, first time I've lasted the full hour. Yeah, see, Chris gets bored after that. I, I understand. It's not his fault. That's just how people are now. They've got very short attention spans. I, I, I must admit, I, I have difficulty watching the television, especially, especially if... Oh, it's, where is it now? Oh, my God, I've been burgled. No, I haven't. Here it is. <laughs> especially if my iPhone is next to me in the living room. Which it always is. You know, so I'm watching a telly. Could be anything. Star Trek, Doctor Who, whatever. Oh, let me just have a quick look now. And you go and then you, then you've come back to the show and something's happened and you've missed it. Oh, I wonder what that was. And you run the blooming recorder back and you go forward again. So I think even myself, I think this I think this is the cause of a lot of I think it's done, I think it does a lot of good having one of these little phones. But I also think it's doing a lot of damage to people. I was surprised 
surprised. I know a lot of people have got mobile phones, but I was surprised on the train going into Camden the other day, the amount of people that are sitting there hunched over on benches, train chairs, at the stations, walking along, tap, 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 and they don't take their eyes off the screen. It is so addictive. <clears throat> so addictive. I would say, when I'm looking out of the train window at the station, 80% of the people had their heads down looking at a mobile phone doing something. No one's talking to anyone. I don't know how you can fix that. I don't think you can. We've we've moved along now, and that's how it is now. But it's worrying. Good morning, Brendan Brady fan. You're a bit late, ain't you? We've been here an hour. <laughs> it's a bit worrying. 80, 80 to 85% of the people that I looked at on the way to Camden were staring down, looking at their mobile phones. I wonder if this will affect people's eyesight in years to come or, or back problems. No, because they're, they're like this. You know, it's like that. It's like that, isn't it? It's like that all the time. And I think probably after I noticed that, I made a conscious effort not to keep looking at my phone. I put it in my pocket and just stared out the window. It's quite nice on the train. Staring out the window. The only thing is the, the the seats on the train are very narrow. Have you noticed that? So you've only got to have someone with a fat arse sit next to you. You know, and and the, their fat is oozing over onto your chair. I, I usually sit next to the window. But you someone sitting there, you really are squashed against that window, aren't you, on the train? You'd think they would be wider, wouldn't you, those seats on the trains? The old ones used to be. Kim's old school, absolutely. Kim's old school. Chris says it's difficult not to listen to the whole show because it's he's always busy in the morning, aren't you? Always busy in the morning. Yes. Cordy reckons they should be, doesn't necessarily have to be half an hour long. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think the shows are a little bit too long at an hour. I think they should be half an hour. How I would stick to half an hour, though, I don't know. When you go out later today, if you're going on a train or a bus or going just out in the street, just look how many people are hunched over their mobile phones, tap, 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 sending emails, checking Facebook, doing this, doing that. And you can't have a conversation with them. You can't ask someone now, you know, you say to them, oh, do you know what the weather's like today? Uh, quickly, out comes the phone, tap, 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 like that. It's awful. Awful. You do miss a lot of the television when you're sitting there tapping away at the phone. I really, you know, you want to leave, you think to yourself, oh, I'll leave the phone in the kitchen while the telly's on or something like that. I mean, I should do that. I should do that. Even this morning, you know, I was watching the telly um, before I came out to talk to you. The news it was, and I, I thought, oh, I'll just have a quick look. And then you've gone back to the news, and the story that you were waiting for has passed, and you didn't even notice it. I think it's very, very bad indeed. Very bad. Tapping away on your blooming mobile phones all the time. And it, it looks strange. When, you, when you're when you on the train and you sit there and you look out at the station and you see them all tapping away on there, it looks odd. It actually does look odd. People from all ages, tap, tap, tap. That's all they're doing. Tap, tap, tap. In the car, tap, tap, tap. I keep seeing people, and I've mentioned this a few months ago, people watching the television on their mobile phones in the car. Not the passengers, the drivers. I keep seeing that. You can see the picture. I mean, it's so blade brazen as well. You've only got to have a police car pull up next to you, and they'll be able to see straight away there's a television going in the corner of the car. You know, where you would have the, the phone like for the sat-nav. I have the sat-nav up like that. I'm on Waze. I'm on Waze. If you're on Waze, okay... And you're, I, I, for some reason, somehow, all my friends on Facebook are on Waze. It's, it's being connected somehow. I'm not quite sure that's happened. But if you do send me on Waze, do give me a bleep, won't you? Beep, beep. If you're not on Waze, you won't know what that what, what that is. But if you are, you'll know what that is. Give us a beep, OK? Beep, beep. Cordy says, I've seen people walk into the road and at work, if I'm on, till they ignore you. Well, they do. They're on their phone, staring at their phone, and they just walk into the road. 
And the, the annoying thing is it's your fault if you hit them. You know that, don't you? If you're the driver and you hit someone walking across the road with a mobile phone in their hands, that's your fault. I think the law needs to be changed there. Uh, Diane says, I love your shows and always watch till the end, so I don't know, don't mind how old, how long they are. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. I'm going to do one more news story here, boys and girls, and then we'll um, uh, then we'll we're, uh, we're chill out. And this is something... Blimey, there's messages coming through. What the hell is that? Oh, that's that annoying blooming browser. It's so annoying. Every time I I, I um, move the mouse over a picture, accidentally, noise starts playing. I don't know how to turn it out. Now, I say this every year. Do not buy someone a gift card for Christmas. If you really can't think of anything to buy anyone, get yourself some cash and put that in an envelope. Don't buy them a gift card. It restricts them to one or two particular shops or or group of shops or something like that. Or I don't know, or, or, or a bus ride or a, or a day out. They might not want that day out. You might give them, I don't know, a gift voucher for Chessington Zoo and they don't want to go to Chessington Zoo. Or you might give them a gift voucher, Boots the Chemist, and they don't want makeup or... I mean, what, what you know, you, you don't want to give them gift voucher for boots. They don't want anything in there, so they go and buy themselves a few tubes of germaline. <laughs> no. It's a waste of, of, of time giving people gift cards. Please just give them cash if you can't think of anything. Uh, and there's a story in The Sun this morning. Millions of people getting gift cards this Christmas could end up being ripped off. Well, not quite. Not quite. Here's the story. This is not being ripped off. This is This is due to your head. This is due to your head. And you need to be a bit sensible if you are going to give a gift card, which I advise against. I've always advised it. Consumer watchdogs warned that some tokens are worthless if not used be before an expiry date. Now, I don't know how stupid some people are, but are you not aware that most gift cards have some sort of expiry date on there? Of course they do. Um, uh, others make it difficult to find out what the date is or charge for extending the time limit. The witch investigation found that they can vary between eight weeks. So you've got Christmas and then eight weeks to spend it or five years. It said, why do gift cards have expiry dates? If the likes of. Where's that gone? <laughs> this honestly, there's so many ads on blooming websites now. It just jumps around all over the place. Um, if the likes of Aldo, Apple Store, Disney, Foot Locker and Selfridges don't feel the need to impose expiry dates, why do others? The UK's gift card and voucher industry is now worth £6 billion a year. So here's some of them. Eight weeks. A cardo. A cardo. Only give you eight weeks to spend their gift card. Although they say it's going to be 12 months soon. So that's going to be extended. Uh, 12 months, you've got one year to spend your gift cards from JD Sports, Pandora, Sunglasses, Hut, Ted Baker and Westfield. Well, 12 months is enough time, isn't it? For God's sake. I think people forget them. People forget they've got a little card in their top drawer and then you forget, oh, it, oh it's, you've lost it. Yeah, you know, it could be 50 quid, couldn't it? If you're lucky. More likely a tenner or maybe 20. 24 months you get for accessorise, as the boots, debenhams. I mean, once you get to 24, 12, even 12 months, I think that's fair enough. I mean, why do you think, why do people think that they're, that, that these cards go on forever? I just don't understand. But as I say, putting that aside, I do not recommend you give anyone a gift card or a book token or we used to have record vouchers. You don't get those anymore or an Apple iTunes card or anything like that. You get some an Apple, Apple iTunes card. I don't know. 20 quid. There you go. 20 quid. Go get yourself some music. But what if they don't want to do that? You're better off to put that 20 quid in an envelope. And then because... December is so close to February, which is my birthday on the 5th of February. I will be 55 years old next year. By giving them money, they could save that money for a Christmas present for me. Yes, please. Just give them money with a little note. Please feel free to use this for Chris Reardon's United Kingdom Talk Christmas present. There you go. All right. 
the best Christmas present you could give me, boys and girls, is to share my little shows to everyone's wall. OK, that's your Christmas present to me. I'll let you know when to do that. <laughs> I love it. Good morning, Tweety Charlotte. You're a bit late, love. What time is this? <laughs> Cordy says the police can pull you if you're on your phone. Absolutely. But they seem to get away with it. <clears throat> and it's a lot of Uber drivers, I've noticed. Or minicab drivers. They've got televisions on in their in, in their cars. And I saw one of them. It's got some, it had something foreign on it with little squiggly lines. <clears throat> They're all watching the telly in the cars. Terrible. Okie doke. Let's do today's birthdays. And then uh, I'm going, uh, it's time for my daily swim. I haven't been swimming this week. Terrible. Terrible. I've been so, so busy this week swimming. Uh, doing everything else other than swimming. Happy birthday today to uh, a very good friend of mine, Dave Hoskins, who I just became friends with only a, a couple of months ago now. Uh, he comes to the karaoke nights, uh, also known as Dave H. He's married to the lovely, uh, gorgeous Lady Phoenix. You may have seen them at our karaoke streams. Dave is a fantastic singer. He looks good and he dresses well and he's tall like that. Tall like that. Uh, Dave today is 38 years old. Happy birthday, Dave. Don't know if you're down with us at all at the weekend, but uh, happy birthday, whatever else you're doing, OK? Uh, happy birthday to Keefe Horwood. Greetings, Keefe. Happy birthday to you. Paul Rosling. Happy birthday, Paul. Uh, Rosie Glow is 45 years old today and looking so much younger, Rosie. Happy birthday. Uh, Mike Nice. Happy birthday, Mike Nice. Uh, Giovanni... Uh, Grig Nashi, I, th I hope I've got that right, Sir Giovanni, 76 years old tonight. Happy 76th birthday to you, Giovanni. And Dominic Delaney, uh, Delaney who used to come along to uh, Bingay. Bingay was my own version. Well, it wasn't my version, actually. Uh, it was a version of Bingo as introduced to the world by the great drag queen herself from Sydney, Australia, Mitzi McIntosh. I went over... Uh, on holiday once to Sydney. This is years ago now. Uh, uh, to Australia. Sydney was one of the places. Uh, Mitzi McIntosh was hosting Bingay at um, the Imperial Bar, which was in Newtown. And I went there just to see what it was like. And I loved it. And I brought it back here. And uh, I started doing it over here. Mitzi McIntosh, really, really fantastic, lovely person and great drag queen. She lives over here now. I don't think she does the drag over here. For some reason, um, what she did over here, she did she, in Sydney, the crowds are very different. And she was, a, she is a fantastic drag queen, does a lot of mime. Over here, we don't do it so much. So therefore, the audience were not appreciative at all. Uh, some were, you know, a lot were, but not as many as those in Sydney. And it, it's a great shame. And I've seen this so many times um, where artists come on the stage, drag artists, and they do their thing. And I think, oh, that's fantastic. And the crowd are like, oh, uh, right. Uh, okay. But it, it's not just her, to be fair. You know, it's lots of other people. It wasn't her. Absolutely wasn't her. Very, very talented. Anyway, Mitzi McIntosh with the Bingay. I bought it over here. And uh, Dominique used to come along and play, didn't you? Bingay. Wasn't that great fun? I, it was hard work doing that. You had to go out constantly looking for prizes and things like that. So uh, happy birthday, everyone. Let's do the song. I've just realised I didn't have my button pushed for our callers earlier. Could you hear them all right? Or did I have that button pushed? I don't know. I won't know till I check back on the show in a bit. Anyway. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dave, Keithy, Paul, Rosie, Mike, Giovanni and Dominique. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday, everyone. Tweety, it's just after 6 a.m. there. Well, good morning. It's 6 a.m. I'm doing a breakfast show. I've been chatting away while you've had your little eyes closed, Tweety. You lovely person. And Christina says, I got gift cards that have already expired. Oh, no. What, from shops? That's terrible, isn't it? Terrible. Right, going to disappear now. Thanks very much for joining us for the show today, boys and girls. Uh, tonight, it's karaoke tonight, every Friday. Join us at uh, Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Show starts at 8.30 and finishes at midnight. We'll be streaming the show live, hopefully, 
on uh, Facebook Live, if uh, not available, on YouTube Live, one of the two, okay? And I'll put a little notification there as well. So that's karaoke tonight and every Friday. Join us 8.30 to midnight, Central Station Bar, Wolfdale Road, King's Cross. Free entry, be nice, come and sing. Doesn't matter your level of singing, whether you can't sing a note or whether you can be a fantastic singer, we don't care. It's all about having a good night. So I see some of you down there at Harbour State. Enjoy your Friday and it's time for me to go swimming. Bye-bye.